Me, myself, and I are the crew for today, and the goal is to get everything out of this area here. This old storeroom is not in good shape and it needs to be torn down. It's really unsafe in the condition it's in, and safety is number one on our list of things we have to take care of. In its place, I'm drawing up plans to add some bathrooms. One of those bathrooms will be handicap accessible. The goal is to make the house and grounds available to everyone, so this area is turning into a bit of a priority. You can see this room still has a lot of old bricks, pieces of slate, old paved stone, cinder blocks, all kinds of stuff. It all has to come out, so I'm going to get working. about an hour or so I'm still sorting and moving bricks and the light bulb finally goes off in my head I'm hiring a big excavator to come in and remove all that brick rubble that's in the giant pile where I'm taking all this rubble and they're gonna tear down this area at the same time and then finish some of the grade work in the yard I was sorting all the brick and removing the good brick and putting it in a pallet in the garage area and then throwing the rubble into the rubble pile it dawned on me it's completely unnecessary to remove the rubble since when this is torn down that excavator will just scoop up all the debris and load it in the dump truck to haul away. I don't mind working hard but I hate doing unnecessary work or being inefficient with my time. So I immediately switched to a new plan that was just to quickly sort everything and leave the rubble behind and only take out the things I wanted to keep. Every time you see me going back and forth without gloves, I'm removing toads. There were eight or nine of them living in all these bricks. I was a little mad at myself for not realizing this earlier. Um, and I think between being mad and bored, I decided to stop and change tasks, which I tend to do a lot when I'm working. I'm tired of moving bricks, so I've come inside to do a project in here. Heather and I showed you these windows the other day, but let me get in close and show you the condition and some of the problems. The ones that we were working on, I had taken out before and they were a real challenge. And let me show you why. Somebody has come in and put screws all over the place, even coming in through the side to hold these windows in, I guess to keep somebody from breaking in, although I really don't understand why it has burglar bars on the outside, but the way the hinges are, the screws to the hinges are on the inside, there's no removable pin that I've been able to get out, which means you have to get these open to access the screws to the hinge to remove them. So these are going to be extremely hard to get out. It may be that I have to just knock the whole frame out, which may which, which may not be too hard because this is pretty rotten in here. But once I do that, this will be open to the elements and we won't be able to secure it. So I have to come up with a way to temporarily secure these windows while the window's out. Look there at the New steel lentils already getting a little gross. So anyway, the frames are not in bad shape, but getting them out in one piece could be a challenge. Today, I'm just here to measure all of the lumber that I need to make. Well, I called this a frame. That's a, I would call that a sash. Anyway, to make these outside frames. I need to know exactly what I need, how many feet, rough lengths, and dimensions, because we'll have to buy that in rough lumber and plane it down ourselves. So 
So I'm here to measure and take an inventory. As I started to take measurements on the window, I noticed there was a jagged, broken cast iron pipe right where I needed to stand. So I decided to grab the hoe and fill that area in and cover that pipe up to make it safer to work. As usual, I got sidetracked and I just kept moving sand and I never really did get back to measuring the windows. By the time I finished that, I was grossly dirty, so I decided to tackle another small project that had been a bit of an irritation. As usual, I got sidetracked and didn't do the chores I wanted to do, or finish the chores I wanted to do. But I did get a few things accomplished, and everything has to be done sooner or later, so I do want to get this big hole filled up it's the last really dangerous thing outside and if someone were to come in the property and step in it and sue me i'd be really mad so i want to go ahead and get some dirt in it it's actually a pretty big hole and i like to do it a little at a time so it has time to settle Unfortunately, we haven't been getting any rain for probably six weeks. So I'll probably put a foot or so in here and get the water hose and turn this into soup so it can settle in, get rid of all the air pockets and get pretty tightly packed. And that's gonna be the rest of my day. It is gorgeous outside. The yard guy came and mowed. It looks good. It's going to take me a while. I have a new plan. And get it over there. Oops. Oh dear. Let's get a running start. Oh, that's some finer sand. Oops. Go under that pipe easier. I'm going to have to get in the hole. Oh, my God. Let me get that. Underneath the pipe, like the plumber did, inside. I don't think it's going anywhere. I would not want this to bottom out right here. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to get one more load of that and put in. All right, I've decided to do a little science project to show you 
what I'm doing. I remembered, I don't know why, but I remembered I had a bucket of dirt from Galveston in my garage. So I'm going to take some of it and put it into a clear jar. Oops, my husband probably won't be happy when I get it all over the garage floor. So we're going to pretend that this is the hole that I'm filling up. And this dirt is very dry, just like the dirt I've been shoveling into the hole. And it's got some big chunks. So I'm going to put it, oops, I'm going to put it in here and then I've got a Sharpie. Oh, well, you know what? Oh, I've got a Sharpie. I'm going to mark. I'm going to mark the line where the dirt is. A little more. Okay, I hope this works. I took a Sharpie and marked a line where the dirt is. Now I'm going to fill this jar up with water. All right. Look at all the air bubbling up. Out of there that's all the space between the grains of soil they're now filling up with water right. give that a good shake and then I'm gonna go have lunch and let that sit Okay, I'm back. It's been about 30 minutes. I've poured the water off and look, you can see that the dirt has settled almost an inch below where I drew that line with the Sharpie. So that's a lot of movement. It settled maybe 20%. Imagine if I didn't get all the dirt underneath the pipe packed down and all the air out by watering it in. And later I had all that weight of another four feet or so of dirt on top and it all settled, it can actually move that pipe in the ground and push it down and cause problems on the drainage. So that's why I shovel a little and stop and water a lot and get that dirt to settle. And using that fine sand also helps fill in all of the places between the larger grains of dirt. Let me show you inside. See how I'm trying to get sand all around that pipe so it's seated very well so that all the way to the dirt going on top of that can't push the pipe down. I think one more load of sand might do it. Let me go in and then, oops that down. I think that's going to do it. I'm going to get the hose and water it in one more time. Get some butterflies. Oh gosh, we gotta go have a frog rescue. Oh, no, 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 please, oh, please don't go in there. Oh, shoot. All right. Oh, dang it. Oh, can't kill a toad or a frog. Went in a place I can't get him. Oh, 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 oh. Let me water some more. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll swim out. He's actually a frog, not a toad.
That's well, he's climbed the wall. So maybe I can fill in this end and make him a space to crawl out. I spent 30 minutes trying to get that stupid frog out before I just gave up. It was getting close to noon and I'd promised Letitia's mom I would take her to lunch, so I cleaned up and headed north. And then this happened, a couple of miles away from her house. I ran over a bungee cord and the S-hook just destroyed my tire. I don't know if YouTube allows me to say SH you know what, but uh, I was on my way back from Galveston. This is my brand new tire, it's five days old and I think I've mutilated it. Fortunately, Letitia's husband has an auto body shop that restores classic cars. Let me show you a couple of the cool things I have working. Look at that, that's John. Anyway, they do fabulous work. But Letitia's mom is coming to get me, and we're going to take the tire to Discount Tire and get another new one. So Betty, she's my, my adopted mama. She's going to take me and get a new tire. <laughs> By the time we made it to lunch, it was almost 2.30. So we had a nice time together, and I just blew off the rest of the day and headed home. Some days just aren't as productive as others, and I can't get upset about that. I was just thankful my flat tire happened so close to John's shop and not on the Causeway Bridge coming out of Galveston. Tomorrow's another day, and I'll head down and try to get myself back on track, but I have a feeling it's just going to be one of those weeks. There's so much to do here at the Lee Kempner House. Don't miss out on the ups and downs of restoring this amazing Victorian mansion. Subscribe and hit that like button. Every view helps fund this massive restoration project.